like you ever fell. We are live, you know. Um, wait, so you don't have to look like a Jose to be a Jose? No. All right. Well, that, I guess that makes sense. I guess that makes sense. You know, sometimes you. I don't look like a Charlie. Or, uh, I don't know. I don't look like a what? Uh, Tim? No. Timothy? No. I don't know. I think I look like a Charlie. You look like a Jimmy. I only say that because I know your name's Jimmy. If I didn't know your name was Jimmy, I would like, hey, um, John. <laughs> All right. So, uh, it is the twenty. What the? It's the twenty-first of February, two thousand sixteen. Fifteen. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did we skip a whole year? I skipped the whole year this time. Wow. All right. Well, we're live, um, so you can tell this is not uh, edited. And thank you guys for joining on the correct day, the 21st, to <laughs> February 2015. Well, it's starting out rough already. Um, my name is Charlie Maverick, and I got Jimmy Banks on the show. Long time since Jimmy's been on the show. How you been, man? I'm doing good. Good. Nice to have you back. Uh, nice to see you in good health, and um, I hope you stay that way. Uh, I know it's been a long time since you've done Jimbo Knows, but uh, I'm sure it's going to come back soon when football starts back up. Um, and, uh, NBA playoffs. NBA playoffs. I haven't, you know what? I haven't watched a full NBA game yet. I haven't either. Uh, yeah. You know what? You know what usually starts it for me is. Um, I would usually watch March Madness and finish out the tournament with the Final Four. And I'll say maybe a week or two weeks before the NBA playoffs, I'll start to watch them because that's when everything's more serious and it's crunch time. So those guys are like, you see, your, you see the best regular season basketball two weeks before the uh, the NBA playoffs. So you see who's going to be bandwagoners or not, and it's all good, you know. It's all good. So, today's show is about mobile payments and secure payment procedures. Uh, before we get started with the show, just want to remind everyone that the MathCast is accessible to you on the blog. Uh, if you want to join the blog site where you can find all the episodes, audio and video, on the Mav for the MathCast show, uh, you can do that at themathcast.blogspot.com. And uh, you can subscribe to the channel, the blog. You can subscribe to the channel itself, the YouTube channel for me. If you're looking at the video, you just go to the subscribe button and click that. And you'll get updates on every new episode. If you like to uh, just listen to the show, you can also subscribe to the Mavcast on iTunes. So you can listen to the Velvety Voice. That's what I was told. I have a Velvety Voice. I don't know. Um... And hear all the uh, the great shows that we have and the great guests that I have uh, and the topics so you can learn and be entertained. So today we have, I'd say a lot of people are not into tech like we are, uh, but a lot of people are into making sure they don't have their identity stolen, uh, credit card fraud. Or they just want to make sure that they don't have to get anything compromised by the breaches that we have. So over the past two years or so, we've seen breaches on Target, Sony, Home Depot, and a multitude of other um, you know, servers from big-name companies that got compromised by hackers and identity has been stolen. Uh, credit card information has been stolen. Some people have had to put their life back together because of this. And we're going to talk about how the future of how you pay for things is going to change all that and maybe lessen the possibility of you having to put your life back together and costing you a lot of money and heartache. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Jimmy, I don't know if you have had your identity stolen or credit card stolen or whatnot, um, or if you know someone. But can you just give a like an opinion of how how difficult it is to come back from that if you if you can? 
I have never had it stolen or nothing like that, or know anybody has it, their identity stolen. So um, I heard it's very difficult. I mean, you got to go through a ten-step process, get everything declined, and get everything back like it was. Yeah, and I mean, it's not your fault, but it feels like the burden is always on you as the the, the card holder to where you have to go through all the jump through all these hoops to put your life back together and all the thief had to do is just steal the number go swipe it somewhere or if you lose your card just go swipe it somewhere and they get the full benefit you are the one that has to uh, to pay for it so there's two things that are coming up uh, basically had a conversation with someone at, at my job and I work for a hotel company a major hotel conglomerate um, and the way that things are changing in the world because of all these breaches and and hacks has changed the way that we think as a culture in terms of payments so foreign countries like France have already caught on to different forms of protecting your identity and uh, make sure your phones funds don't get stolen uh, and cut down on 80 percent of uh, the credit card fraud cases that they've had in the past. Uh, the way that they're going to do that and the way that things are going to change is you're going to have a smart card or a chip and pin card. Now, in the industry, uh, that's basically known as EMV chip. So, EMV, uh, Echo Mary Victor chip. It's basically a chip on your card that you can see it looks kinda like I don't, I'll, if you ever looked at your SIM card it kinda looks exactly how the back of that SIM card looks with the with the metal on it the actual chip itself and they place that inside the, on the card so it's it's not protruding or anything but it's something that is going to change how the credit card readers the point of sale systems read your card information. Currently the most popular way to pay for things at uh, your merchant, like if you go to Old Navy, go to Publix, whatnot, you swipe your card and it has that magnetic strip. That's what we're all used to. That's how all the information gets stored on the company servers for, for you know your payment information and it reads your card number and it's not encrypted. It's the least secure way to possibly pay for things, except for cash. So if you if you pay for cash uh, versus credit card, uh, this is kind of like I mean, credit card is always better, but you still run the risk of you know backlash with that. Uh, a little bit of backstory with it, if you're not really familiar with the the breaches in credit card information that happened at like Target. What happens is the companies store your information when you swipe your card. They store it on a centralized server that they own, and it gets stored there for a couple of different reasons. They want to know your payment habits, and they want to know the frequency of your payment habits. So it is this, there's a, a reason why they do that. They save that information so they can send you ads and know how to promote things to you. This is real important to them. Your data is important. So we always talk about data collection from you know Apple, Google, but we never really talk about data collection until now from uh, the merchants like Home Depot and all those guys. Well, this data is actually, in a sense, more critical to your existence and the way that you operate every day. So what happens is they t they store this data unencrypted. You can see the card number. It's old school technology. The 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 uh, the magnetic strip gets swiped and it reads that information. It's stored there so they can basically sell you stuff. Do they want to give this up? The stores don't want to give this up. So how many times have you been to the store, Jimmy, swiped your card the way that we know how to do it, using the swiping method, using the magnetic strip on your card? How many times did you ever think about 
Like, if I was somebody else, this could really turn out bad. Because all I'm doing is signing this piece of paper if I don't have to put in a pen. Like, with a debit card, if you run it as debit, you have to put in a pen. But if you run it as credit, all they, send you, all they give you is a slip for you to sign, and then you're on your way. How many times have you thought about the fact that so anybody can actually just run with my card and buy a whole bunch of stuff, and I find about, about it like a month later when I look at my credit card statement? How many times have you thought about that? I never, I never have. Well, you should have because it is so easy at this point for someone to take your car. I don't, have you ever taken uh, like your parents' card or something, gone to the store and got something for them, um, and they, you had your card, and all you need to do is sign, force their signature, but you had their approval, but they still weren't with you. Have you ever done that? Yeah. All right, so think about the, the way that someone else, anybody else, if you lose your card and you don't even know that you lost your card, think how easy it is for someone to go and swipe that card, get something, run it as credit, and just sign their name. It's very easy. It's very easy, and that's very dangerous, and a <coughs> lot of people do that. So what is changing now is that they're going to change the way that we use our credit card with the EMV chip. The EMV chip is going to require the stores, the point of sale mechanisms that you are traditionally swiping your card with, they're going to require those to be compatible with the chip and pin card. So it ha your card has to have the chip and you have to put in the pin with it. So the point of sale register has to be connected to some type of internet. What happens is you slide your card in. You don't slide it through the swiping thing. You slide it into the point of sale system. It notices that it is this encrypted message and you have to enter your pin just like a debit card. You have to enter your pin number that you have that is only known by you into this so they know that it is you and only you that is using this card. This is seems simple, but there's a reason why it hasn't happened yet. You might have a couple of credit cards out there that have this chip on it, or and you might have a couple of credit cards that don't. I recently got a couple of cards and they still don't have this information this this chip on there. And the reason why the credit card companies are so like hesitant to fully enforce this because first of all it's not law yet it's, it's going to be in the fourth quarter this year around October but there's a reason why they they are not really pushing this so much until they have to this they want to issue it however it's going to prevent the merchants the stores like big box places like Target and all those guys from being able to read that same information that you give them with the magnetic swipe so they it will make it harder for them to push advertisement to you to learn your payment behavior so they have pushed back from the merchants and you have pushed back from the card companies so the banks are just going they're just banging each other in the face and the government had to say hey with all these with, with all these hacks and all these breaches you are going to basically basically collapse the market the economy if this keeps on happening because no one is going to trust any place to house their data if you guys don't fix this, find a happy median. Overseas, they're already doing this stuff. Overseas, they're already doing it. But the U.S. government said, you guys have to do something. They didn't do anything. They fought with each other, so the government was like, well, we got to make a law. You have until October 2015 to change all of your point of sale systems. This is with your merchants. This is also with hotels. So the way that they swipe your card when you check in is going to change too. They're going to have that same point of sale system where they insert the card into the the mechanism. So you it'll be more secure, be more encrypted. It'll be that you have to type in a pin for that, which is good. It is good. It is good because it is harder for that hacking 
to to happen. There's other forms of hacks that can ruin your life just the same, but the immediate threat is your money. The immediate threat is your money. If they get your address and stuff like that, it's not as quick because they have to still figure out a whole bunch of other stuff. But your money is most important to you. That piece piece of plastic houses all of your funds. I don't I know I don't carry cash because I lose cash. I take up my wallet too fast or I look for something and the cash is gone. I can't keep track of cash like I want to. So I have online banking. If I swipe, I look and see exactly the transaction what happened and it does the the subtraction for me. And when I have deposits, it adds it for me. I don't need to keep track of things like that. Like keep it like balancing a checkbook. They they taught us how to balance a checkbook in high school, right? Yep. We don't have to do that. A check is is just as terrible. A check is horrible. Like remember remember like, I know a lot of people like older people do this, but they send checks off in the mail like for mortgage, uh house insurance and all of that. You send it through the mail, which is crazy cuz all somebody needs is your routing and account number which is on that piece of paper. <laughs> And they mess up your life. You can you can go online with that piece of information and empty somebody's bank account, just like the car. But we're not really talking about that. So that has to be fixed too. But the point of sale systems are changing to where you would have to upgrade your 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 technology to make it more secure for the customer. Now there's a, there's a bit of criticism with this also. A lot of criticism with this. Uh, pushback. At the time, if there was a major breach with like Target and Home Depot, the executives had to bear the burden of this. Okay? Because they the insiders knew of the practice. You swipe your card, they house the information on their servers, their servers get breached, and they have all that information. That's not good. The the liability is on the merchant. Now, and which is another one of the pushbacks of the banks, is now that when you have the EMV chip on your card and the point of sale system is used properly to swipe that card per se, now the liability is on the bank because it has that authentication system to where you have to first you're supposed to tell the person to put it in to the the card reader and then put in their pin now it's not going to fully cr cut down on the the amount of fraud but it's going to severely lessen it so what happens is if there is a major breach there if they do it right like it's supposed to there is no information in terms of card numbers that they can get from breaching that server because first of all everything is encrypted to a certain level right now later down the line they might figure out a way around that but for right now this is one of the most secure ways of doing it so for those of you that have cards from your bank that you just got and banks are like really hesitant to do it some credit cards are doing it some credit cards are not but if you have a card uh, that does not have the chip make sure you you pay attention because you're gonna receive another card and if you don't you need to ask your car company to send you a card that has this chip because this is very important it's gonna change the way that we totally operate okay so another thing is which is kind of a step back and we're gonna kinda of tie it in together is we're gonna bring in the mobile payment side of it we have Samsung we have Google Wallet we have uh, Apple Pay we have those three entities which are the big guys that are trying to make a play on your trust and making sure that you use them and you trust them rather than trusting each and every merchant that you go to to give your card information to so what we have with Apple Pay which is so popular right now is that the banks are totally buying into it kinda I mean, they kind of really have to do it because if you put the card on there, it's uh, it's totally up to Visa and MasterCard and American Express to authorize these things. So if you have that logo on there, you're going to do it. But the banks are like, well, they're going to add the card anyway. 
let's promote it, let's get them ready for this new chip and, and pen thing. The, 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 these tech people, these geeks are going to use it, and they're going to be so used to it that they're going to buy into it. So you have the Apple Pay that allows a lot of banks, and banks are promoting it, so you can just tap to pay at the register. This is not the same action. This is slightly different. You take your phone that has NFC, or if you have an NFC uh, case on it, you tap at the register, it pays for it in an encrypted way. So the bank, or sorry, the, the merchant never sees any information about it. Now, the merchants hate this. Now, ask me why the merchants hate this, Jimmy. Because they can't um, track what you're buying and how you're paying for it. Exactly. Because it's right on it, and that is why they don't want this. They do not want this to change because they're going to have to change the entire way of how they consume your data to benefit them so they can target you in TV ads, mail ads, and ads anywhere, basically. So... They they need to know what to push to you because they can't push everything to you. So this is this is vital to their existence. You you gotta you can't throw everything at the at the count at the uh, the cabinet and and see what sticks. That's too much money in marketing. You have to see what trends are happening. Why if you ever looked on Amazon, if you ever looked on Walmart, you see the top sellers. Now they track that by a couple of ways. Now they have to know the payment history of it and they collect that. And they also get the study, the traffic from the website itself. So there's two ways that they're doing it. They're getting your payment information, and then they know how exactly to target these and how to communicate with you in terms of that. One is your email, one is your, uh, another one is your card information, and the other one is just how or what you buy. So they hate that. They don't like mobile payments. So while while everyone's the media is promoting Apple Pay and whatnot, the banks are promoting Apple Pay. If you, the merchants really hate it, and before Apple Pay, there was Google Wallet. The Google Wallet was the thing that was supposed to was supposed to push the revolution towards. You know, you had a lot of Android users. You had people that knew how to use Google Wallet, NFC. This was supposed to be the thing that brought that behavior to um, to the U.S. It was already overseas. They use NFC for payments and and a whole bunch of other things overseas for for mobile payments. But NFC was supposed to be that thing that was supposed to help, like kill everything. Like supposed to streamline the process, uh, keep you from having to bring your credit cards out. So you wouldn't have to lose them. It was supposed to store it on either Apple's servers or Google's servers. It was supposed to be a thing that it was supposed to be like Skynet for payments. You know, they have all this. No one is breaching Google. They pay people to breach Google, and if they breach them, they either pay them a lot of money, like, hey, leave us alone, good, thank you, or they hire them. See, that's what you got to do. But... This was supposed to change the way that Americans paid for things, consumed things. Well, of course, Google didn't really advertise it, and you know the nerds were using it. And every time you go, have you ever paid with Google Wallet? No. Like I have, but people look at you funny when you're at the register trying to tap your phone to pay. The the person that is checking you out is like, uh, What are you doing? What are you doing? I went to I went to um, several places, but my, the first time I tried it was at McDonald's, and you know they got teenagers there that like whatever. And you think teenagers know about tech? You know I'm I'm in my thirties. They should know more about tech than I do. But I tap my phone. They're like, hey, uh, can can I can I can I see your card? I'm like, nah. Uh, I'm just tapping the bay. You got you got NFC right there, and they're like, uh, uh, what's okay, that? yeah. What what what's that? What what'd you just do? My 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 register uh saw your payment, but you you didn't you didn't show me your card. Uh, 
one person actually called the manager like what do I do <laughs> I'm like oh god <laughs> everybody's looking like oh my god uh, then another person was like hey that's so cool I'm like can I get my food now They're like you get two reactions you're either the coolest person that they ever saw or you're the most ridiculous looking person and they want to know why the hell you are doing this while they're <laughs> Well, they're clocked in. Like, I don't want to deal with this shit. <laughs> like, is this dude crazy or something? <laughs> but, but, but that's how it is. And when Apple Pay came around, the merchants got scared again. Like, they weren't really scared with Google Wallet because there weren't a lot of people paying with Google Wallet, enough for them to care. And the banks didn't really promote it. But you had the carries didn't want it. The carries didn't want Google Wallet. Carries didn't want it because they want to be able to get p pushed back from the merchants so they can sell that information to them and then they can get kicked back from it. We're going to get into soft card soon, how that plays into it because we haven't talked about soft card. That's a big, big thing. We're also going to talk about something called loop pay, which I just found out a couple of days ago, which is totally awesome. I didn't know why I didn't know about it, but we're going to see what how that ties in. So... You had the the banks that were were like ah oh, you whatever, and then you had the merchants who were like I want your data, and then you had people use a Google Wallet, which wasn't a lot of people, and you know one or here and there they're doing transactions, people are paying for gas or whatnot or little things, not big things because you know whatever you didn't want to look like a dumbass paying for like a TV with your with your phone, and you're like hmm. You know what? You're not serious about this. I'm gonna put this TV back, and you can get out my store now. It, it's stuff like that. So, when Apple Pay came out, and everything Apple does, I'm not an Apple hater, but everything Apple does, they alert the media to the way they need to push this because they invested a lot of money. They're the most valuable company in the world. They want to make sure that whatever they put out is known about. So, when Apple Pay came around, even before it actually started. You know, the hotel industry knew about it. They were like, how do we do this? You know, you got you got a couple of hotel companies that are ready for Apple Pay. You got um, you got merchants that are like, well, you know, we can't get the data from this, but, you know, we still want your business. So if you're still, if you're going to shop here anyway, you're going to use this. I, I might as well let you, like, go ahead and use it. But CVS said, uh-uh. CVS, the pioneer of a lot of things, CVS, the pioneer of not serving any more tobacco in their pharmacy, which was a funny thing, like a pharmacy selling tobacco is like counterproductive if you ask me. But they were like, you're not going to use Apple Pay here. What happens when you cut out Apple Pay? Well, you can't use Google Wallet either. And when I first used Google Wallet after the whole Apple Pay debacle at first, I was like, you know what? Life was good. Until these bastards got in here, and then everybody knew about it, and the merchants was like, well, I can't get your information. So, nobody's, no, you know, it's hit or miss. You used to be able to do it at Toys R Us. I went to Toys R Us to shop, do some Christmas shopping. I was like, I used this at Toys R Us before. It declined my card. For some reason, it was like, you can't pay with a debit card. I'm like, well, you know, it's not really a debit card, but. For some reason, it's recognized it as a debit card. And you're like, mm, well, all right. So person's like, well, can I have your card now? I'm like, well, it's not supposed to work like that. It's supposed to, whatever. So it made it more difficult for things to happen because Apple Pay. And Apple Pay is still being promoted. Some some people are, uh, some merchants are more lenient. And, you know, they're, they're like, you know, whatever. We just don't want to lose your business. Because some people are like, I'm going to boycott the place because you won't let me pay how I want to pay. I'm still buying your shit. And they didn't understand that the whole thing with the loyalty programs and all that. Let me back up for a minute. Going on a side note. Loyalty cards. You think... You're just getting a discount with loyalty cards. That is not all you're getting. Loyalty cards is a sham and a great thing. Loyalty cards will get you... So here's what they do. Here's what they do. The prices are supposed to be that when you give them your loyalty card. However, they market 
up, so you're like, ooh, I need to get that loyalty card so I can get that lower price. That is the actual price of that item, but they just marked it up if you're not a member. What they do with that information is they say, hey, you give us something or we gave you something, you give us something. We learned your buying behavior. We track every single item you buy. Learn your behavior just because we gave you a discount. I like Publix because Publix doesn't have loyalty. You know, I shop at Publix because they don't do that. They're one of the few that don't do that. But they still find a way. They still find a way. They store your credit card information on there, which is kind of still bad. You know, but but still. But, but, but back on the subject at hand, how do you find a happy median if you're a merchant? How do you do that? Well... The carriers got together, the mobile carriers, the big guys got together and like, hmm, well, we see an opportunity. We're going to get together, have a coalition, and we're going to figure out a way how we get these mobile payments in here. We get the payment data. We sell the merchants the buying behavior data. We get kickback because they have to pay us for that data. And since we collect data anyway, we just house all this data so we know how to sell you things, and we get it's it's like money exchanging everywhere. So they're like, let's make a compatible, you know, universal type mobile payment app that's not Google Wallet, that's not Apple Pay, that everyone would buy into, right? Whatever. And they called it, what did you call it earlier? Um, soft card wallet? No, you, you can call it by the, the actual name. The, the, the first name. <laughs> the Isis? Yes. But they realized, and I, you know what is funny? I did, they, they should have known that there was a terrorist group out there called this because these are like high-powered CEOs and you know they know everything that's going on in the world so they know where not to travel to. But Apparently, they thought, oh, we can name it the same name as this travel group, or I mean, not this travel group, this uh, this terrorist group, and nobody would know. And nobody didn't, didn't know until, you know, ISIS got popular, and then they're like, well, <laughs> we we got to kind of change the name now, so they rebranded a soft card. So soft card is sitting there, and no one's using it, because no one trusts the carriers. Do you trust AT&T with your data? No. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's a big no. Do I trust Verizon with my data? <laughs> Hell no. But they and the reports have come out that the carriers are storing data and they're letting they're letting the, the NSA and the government tap into your phone any freaking time that they want to. Why would I trust you with my payment data? Why? But there, 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 there's a, where, where we thought that was dead, they have reemerged like the phoenix from the ashes. And Google, this is how Google comes back in. Google is rumored to buy soft card. And this is a way for them to negotiate with the carriers because they're not Apple. We, I love Google. I know you love Google, but they are not Apple with the stronghold that they have for what the carriers do for them. So they're like, well, we have this thing that you already have approved. We're going to pay big money for this, and we just want you to promote putting Google Wallet on the devices. I don't know if they want Google Wallet to be placed on uh, the the iPhones and stuff like that be, uh, as a back end to make sure to give people options with the iPhone that has NFC like the six and the six plus. Do they, do they have a choice to use the Apple Pay or Google Wallet because you can load Google Wallet to iPhones, but you can't use the NFC function with it. You can't use the Touch ID with it. It's not compatible with that. So are they forcing or are they trying to negotiate a way to get soft car, which is already approved by the carriers, to put it on all the phones and promote it like commercials or whatnot so the banks can buy in and get known 
uh, known about Google Wallet, so they can promote it just as much as they promote Apple Pay, and that way that the carriers are happy because they're still getting their data kicked back, just at a lesser extent to what they would have. But the the, the carriers are in a, in a like a, a rock and a hard place. They invested all this time and and resource into making this mobile payment app, but no one's using it because they don't trust the carriers. But if Google buys it, people trust Google. I use Google Wallet. I trust Google. No one has hacked Google yet. I'm just saying. Now, people have hacked Apple with iCloud, but, you know, that's a whole other thing. The way that it will work is Google will have to sell its soul a little bit to be able to go forth with the the efforts of Google Wallet because right now it's stagnant. You can use Apple Pay some places and you can't use Google Wallet that same place, which is stupid and odd at the same time. And, and, and it's all an effort to protect your data. It doesn't matter who does it. Google, Apple, or if it's the implementation at the point of sale systems, they're trying to protect your credit card data. Google's not worried about like your payment behavior. I don't care about my payment behavior. The stores can have the payment behavior. I don't care about if you know what I buy. Because whatever. I don't care. Promote things to me. I probably want it. Let me know if there's an update to Cinnamon Toast Crunch. I'm going to go out and get it, right? You know, French Toast Crunch is out. I just saw that. I'm like, mm, need to go get that. You know, I was at the store today. I still didn't get it. But anyway, shout it's out like, to Marvin. Yeah, shout out to Marvin Hodges. Go get that. Go get that. Take that. Take that. And it, it, it's, it's, it doesn't mean the payment data doesn't mean or the, the buying behavior data doesn't mean that much to me as my payment data. So that's all I worried about. So if Google has a hand in it, there is going to be a way that they can somehow protect your payment data, but you're going to lose your your buying history. That's fine. I don't care. I don't care. Don't care about that. Here's another thing. Another another hand in the pot is you have Samsung. A Samsung is like, hmm, and this is this is gonna be a twisted story, and it's gonna have loops to it. So, if you can stay with me, please stay with me. But God, this almost gave me a headache when I heard about it. Samsung is trying to buy, or already has purchased a company called Loop Pay. Now, for those of you that haven't heard about Loop Pay, Loop Pay is an app that is on your phone, or uh, that can, you can download to your phone now. It's free. And what you could do is you could load your cards, your credit cards, that is, your gift cards, your loyalty cards, and your ID in an effort for you to be able to leave your wallet home so you can just have your smartphone on you, which is password protected anyway. First of all, if you don't have a password on your phone, that's not hiding things from anybody else. That's for your security. You know how much personal data you have on there and you leave your smartphone on the table a lot or at your desk at work? You need to have that password protected, people. You got to do it in this day and age. It's not about hiding stuff. It's about protecting your data. How? Uh, moving on. Uh, I forgot what I was saying. Uh, <laughs> Lupe, yes, thank you. That's why I got you here, Jimmy. Uh, Lupe is is a an app that lets you do mobile payments as if you would have an server. It does it in a different way, and this takes a little bit more upfront cost, you know, which I didn't really like about it. But you have to buy either a fob, a phone case or there is an actual card itself that connects to Bluetooth. Now all these accessories connect to Bluetooth to your phone and what happens is you designate what card you want to be used by this fob, this case, or this card and when you place the accessory, meaning those three items I listed, close to the register, it simulates it simulates the action of swiping your card with the magnetic strip. Now, here is the thing. It sounds cool, but 
judging by what I said before, this is not going to be feasible in the future because the, you have to have the, the chip and pin technology, right? You have to have that. So right now you can use it. If you want to go buy the accessory, if you want to, uh, I, don't, I don't see why you would because if you use Apple Pay already, which they make most of the stuff for Apple phones already, but if you have the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus, I don't see the reason of you using it. But if you have an Android phone, uh, and you are trying to use Google Wallet and you can't, then this might work for you. But I just want to let you know, don't don't really put your money out there because you got to pay to get these accessories. They don't send it to you free. So the action of swiping is going to go away. So there is a lifespan on this already, even though Samsung has invested money into this. What Samsung is going to do, or is trying to do, is talk to the banks and this is where the twist and turn happens. They want to talk to the banks and say, hey, I know that you guys by law have to change how you issue cards and how the people pay with the cards at the point at point of sale. So can you be lenient or make a clause to where we can still use this technology since they're not physically swiping the card? Can we still use this? Or, oh, here's the thing that the banks uh, have said so far. No, because by law, we have to have the action of the chip and pin. You guys are simulating this. Then when we see it come across as a magnetic strip payment, we're going to decline the card. Samsung is like, hey, we're going to probably be the only people still doing this by technology, so can you just accept it? The banks are like, you're going to make us do all this work so we can try to prove that it's coming from loop pay and not someone just using the old school card reader or trying to commit fraud? And the banks, the banks are like, you know what? People have a lot of your phones. A lot of people have a lot of your phones. We might think about this, but we have to figure out how to do it because this is going to take work on our end. We haven't even issued all the cards for the chip and pin to the people. We haven't even done that yet. But you're asking us, even though we have a deadline to reach, you're asking us to do another thing in the, me in the midst of all this the tr so you, Samsung, can have people pay with their phone. Not you why why won't you just help Google try to promote the the Google wallet and the soft card acquisition? And Samsung's like, well we're Samsung. We kinda wanna go to Tizen OS and leave Android, but you know, there's so much things that people the people identify us with Android right now. It's gonna take us some time to step out on our own and do Tizen, which is not Android. So they're like they're trying to build their structure, their infrastructure and ecosystem behind them trying to branch off from Android. And there's been some heat with Samsung and, and Android back and forth for a little bit. They're like, well look, look, you run our OS, you gotta chill out for what you're doing. Samsung was like, Well, we're Samsung, the only the only people we gotta worry about is Apple. And Google is like, yo, you need to worry about us. Because if we start making you pay a lot of money for this OS, what are you going to do then? Samsung's like, well, we're going to go to Tizen. And, and, and uh, Google's like, well, good job, because people identify you with us, so you got to get people to buy into an entirely new OS and learn that entire OS. We're going to take you to court, too. So right right there, you got a whole bunch of things going on. you got to fight with, the, with the, the deadlines that the banks have to meet. You have a fight with Samsung trying to do their own thing and get some type of leniency from the banks and the government so people are not using Loop Pay in December or November doing their Christmas shopping and thinking everything is all good and everything starts declining. So there's a lot of things going on. Also, 
which we haven't even talked about yet, is how this is going to work online. Because you're just cutting the fraud out in the point of sale. How is this going to cut out online? A lot of people have resorted to using PayPal as paying online. Or Google Wallet is paying online. I don't know if you can really pay with Apple Pay online. Do you, do you know if you can pay with Apple Pay online? I don't think you can. I don't think so either. At, at this point, I don't think so. You probably can. If if this is possible, someone leave in the comments because I'm not sure. I have a 5S and I don't know because I can't use it anyway. So I don't know. But I know you can pay with Google Wallet online, PayPal online. And that those two entities are more secure than just putting in your actual card number right online because of the way that they has to go through their servers and it's a it's a authentication process also so that if if you can if you could change your behavior people right now if you could change your behavior of how you buy things online you would have a more secure way of protecting yourself if you pay with Google wallet or if you pay with PayPal and PayPal is everywhere I mean sometimes you can pay with PayPal in person. If you can do that, that's fine. Do that too. If you can't, whatever. Now if you use Square, if you're a person that uses Square app in the card reader, you uh, I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know what Square is going to do. They're going to have to issue a new card reader and that is going to be a totally different thing because it's going to have to read that chip. So that's going to be a hurdle too. So there are a lot of things going on. But all this is in an effort to protect your payment, your money, your funds, your card, your identity. Imagine if somebody wipes out your bank account and you have no cash. You are basically immediately poor until the bank issues you a credit and say this is not your fault. That is, I could only imagine that is the worst feeling in the world aside from the doctor telling you that you're going to die in six months. It has to be the worst feeling in the world. You can prevent that from being educated from what was talked about on this show and proactively saying, Banks, you give me this EMV chip on my card now. Do not wait. Reissue me another one. I want all of the merchants and you and you I, I don't know how you're going to do it with the merchants but they already have the deadline but I don't know if you can rush them either there is and I work in an industry to where standard deadlines have to be met but there's always a way that some people can get out of it or delay it and I hope I hope that the government has thought about not giving that type of um, that type of way that they can get out of it, like you know, uh, this reason I can't do this. I, I I hope that doesn't happen. So as I said, the travel industry is doing it. Uh, you have the merchants that's doing it. If you do your practice correctly online, you could protect yourself. If you can find places to where you can use Google Wallet, fine now, or Apple Pay, fine now. Whenever you're at that place, it doesn't matter how silly you look, use that technology because it could mean the difference between you having your information encrypted or you hearing on the news the following week that so-and-so uh, got hacked and you are one of the people that they took their credit card information you don't want you don't want you don't want to be sitting there on Monday morning and no one like Mondays anyway you don't want to be sitting there on Monday morning listening to the six o'clock news and you're like oh shit I gotta call my bank or you want to get that letter in the mail from your bank saying yeah we had to close your account because you've been, uh, you're one of the accounts that have been breached. Uh, what? You don't want that to happen. Be proactive. Proact the date of the word is proactive. And I'm not talking about the acne medicine. 
<laughs> I'm talking about the real proactive term. Be diligent, be proactive in protecting yourself. This and that means a whole bunch of other things too. Like make sure your passwords are are strong enough with your with your financial you know institutions, apps and whatnot. Make sure your password on your phone is strong enough. Also, because there's there's a two step thing. If you have a password on your phone itself, you also have to put in the password on your Google Wallet, or you have to do Touch ID to get in t or to finish the purchases on your iPhone. You have to make sure that you cover yourself. There is two-step authentication services out there. Google offers them. Um, basically, if you have the iPhone um, 6 and 6 Plus, set up Touch ID. I don't care if you don't like it. I don't care if you're like, it doesn't work all the time. But if when it does work, dude, it's going to work. Okay? If, are you worried about Apple having your data. Well, you know, I'm worried about somebody having my data, but you know, there I think they're the lesser of a few evils out there. And until proven otherwise, I think it's okay. You know, it's it's sitting encrypted somewhere. As long as it's encrypted, it gives you a little bit of assurance that someone's not just gonna jack the hell out of your account. <laughs> so with that being said, um uh, be well. And you know the religious people out there, I, I just got to bring this up because uh, religious people out there, uh, they always talk about the mark of the beast. I want to say, the, uh, you know, the mark of the beast. And they scare the shit out of you because of the mark of the beast. Look, they say the mark of the beast in the Bible, you, there's something you're going to have to have to be able to purchase anything. Is this it? Dude, if this is it, screw it. Use it. Because <laughs> if that means you're not going to get your money taken, dude, whatever. If, if it's a scare tactic, I don't know. If it's something that is leading up to it, dude, just keep your eyes open. Pray a lot. Pray. Pray or something. But, dude, do not do not just say, I'm not going to do it, and keep swiping your card until the deadline. You end up one of those people that have to repair their entire life. That is it's not cool. It's not cool. So, again, be proactive. Be blessed. <sighs> you think I got through to him? You should have. <laughs> if, if they can't, they can't get through with that. There's something wrong with them. Well, you know, yeah, so some people, you know, it's it's just like that. And I and I know my listeners and watches are are people that that care about you know, what they do on a daily basis. I know this has not been the most glamorous topic or it's not been really anything funny to talk about. I'm sorry. But at, sometimes you just have to realize, just like I had the show about Time Warner and, and, and all that, you need to know that. And you guys have went out there, I don't know if it's because of my show or the, the summation of all the shows that talked about it on YouTube or podcasts or iTunes or whatnot, but people said, we don't want this FCC, do not let this deal go through with Comcast buying Time Warner. It hasn't gone through yet, and it might not. But this is a message. You have to use... The, one of the reasons that you have a podcast is to voice your opinions and, and make sure things get across to people through a, a avenue that they wouldn't necessarily hear it through on TV. Because there's, um, there's agendas that people have on TV on the news... I'm not Brian Williams, you know, I'm not going to lie to you like that. I'm here right now. You can see where I'm at. I'm not going to say I was on like doing something. I don't have um I don't have sponsors. You guys are the sponsors. And speaking of that, speaking of that, great segue, Charlie. Thank you. Speaking of that, if you want to donate to the show to make the show better or the or just to show your love, you can give a small donation like 50 cents a dollar or you can give a much Ever as you want, just to say, hey man, you're doing a good job. If you give me a dollar, I'll say, hey man, I'm gonna shout you out. And if you if you don't want to be like um, anonymous and you want to email me and say, hey man, I gave you a dollar, say my name on your show. I'll do it. I'll do it. I don't have a problem. I say people name on the show all the time that didn't give me shit. You know. <laughs> so, AKA Godzilla. 
<laughs> right? <laughs> so if you want to show love to the show, you can either just subscribe to the channel, subscribe to the blog. Again, that is the mathcast.com blogspot.com, you go on the main YouTube channel, on YouTube, on your computer, and look off to the right-hand side on my homepage where I have, you know, the main trailers and recommended videos, and say, hey, I want to donate. Don't think of it as a donation. Just think of it as, hey, I'm giving love. A dollar. A dollar. You can buy a stinking soda that's going to kill you slowly for a dollar, or you can contribute to the show that's going to give you some type of mindless or uh, entertainment, or you can uh, or entertainment that's going to give you value to your life. All right, I said I wasn't going to solicit, so I'm not going to say anymore. But uh, thank you guys for watching, listening, and everything. So Jimmy. Tell them where they can find you on social networks, man. Google Plus, Jimmy Banks. Um, Facebook, Jimmy Banks. Instagram, Jimbo's2006. And that's pretty much it. All right. And Jimbo's nose is coming back around the playoffs, uh, the NBA playoffs. Playoffs? June, I think. That's around playoff time. Sounds about right. Uh, also... Um, Harry Ezel is going to do um, some type of a blockbuster review soon. Had a couple of problems with his uh, YouTube account, but make sure you subscribe to uh, H, what, H, H E 3 Man? That's, That's right. correct. Yeah. H E 3 Man. All right. Uh, and, and follow him on YouTube. So, you guys have been awesome. Next week is going to be really, really busy for me. I'm not going to be able to do a show maybe until next weekend. i got to see how it goes. I might do – I'm at a conference, so if I, if I have enough downtime, which I won't, then I'll do a show, a quick show, whatnot. You guys be awesome. You know where to find me. Mavcast everywhere. Just put in Mavcast on Google and find me however you want. Subscribe to the show any way you feel. Tell your friends about the show, me. Hey, Jimmy, guess what? What's that? I'm a married man now, man. That's right. Married. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Married man. Life is great. I hope y'all guys' life is awesome, too. Jimmy's alive. I'm a married man. I got on a clean shirt. I'm going to go eat because I'm... <laughs> I don't know why I said I got a clean shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I can usually wear a dirty shirt. But <laughs> I'm going to go eat. You guys, take care and enjoy your weekend. Anything else you got to say for the people? No. Peace. All right. Spend money. You know what? That's, I think I'll go do that. Bye-bye. Oh, oh. I'm going to bring this back. Sorry. You guys used to watch the show a long time ago. You guys know about this. If you have baby mama drama... Please don't kick her down the stairs because in this weather, it is very icy on those steps and it could cut into her ass and cause her to cause to call the police. And you get more time added to the sentence that you're going to get anyway because you kicked it down the stairs. That was, that was a nice move. And tax time is here, so that's not going to be enough to pay your bail, really. Why would you submit your taxes to H&R Block on a rapid refund just to pay your own bail? Just for kicking your baby mama down the steps. Then your son sees you and be like, why are you kicking mama down the steps? And he's going to do it when he gets older. And everybody's just going to be a, a corrupted damn family. You guys get it together. You guys get it together. Make At least make sure she has snow boots on before you get... No, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Show's over. <laughs>